Finance Your Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the accessory nerd. But before we get into this video, I just want to thank you guys so much for commenting, subscribing, and more importantly, being a part of the Ninja Nerd community. We really enjoy having you guys here. And if you want to further dive into the community, you can always check out ninjanerd.org, notes, illustrations that you guys can check out and utilize as well to study. As we get started now, wrapping up our cranial nerve lectures, we are on cranial nerve 11, the accessory nerve. So. Right off the bat, we've been going through what are the types? Is it a motor, is it a sensory, or is it both? And for this one, it is a motor. And the function that we can touch on really quickly before we talk about all these different diagrams is there's three functions that are primarily used with the accessory nerve, with this motor nerve. But one of them is also used in tandem or along the uh, same as the vagus nerve. So that's gonna be swallowing. And then we have Two other functions that can be utilized looking at this picture right here, the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. Those are the two muscles that are particular to the accessory nerve. So let's really quickly understand what these diagrams are talking about, talk about the function and how we're going to assess it then. So I just quickly drew a very rough diagram of what the skull looks like with some of the holes that the skull has in order for us to understand a little bit of how the accessory nerve gets its two different functions and its two different names or roots. So we can first start with the blue here. We can see it's coming out of the brainstem, the spinal cord. It's going up through the foramen magnum and then coming through the skull and out the jugular foramen. Now we understand that the jugular foramen is a hole that's at the bottom of the skull. For this diagram, it was just easier to put it a little bit to the side. But understand, it's, you know, it's up underneath in the inferior portion of the skull. So this is the spinal portion of the accessory nerve. When it's inside the skull right here, it is called the spinal root of the accessory nerve. And then when it's outside, as it exits the jugular foramen, we then have the spinal accessory nerve. Then we can also see here in the orange, we have different portions that it comes out and it also kind of runs along the line, but it goes a different way. For this, we have portion of the nerve originating from the nucleus ambiguous, this neuronal cell body cluster in our mandula oblongata, right next to our olives. What it does is it allows for the nerve to start and as it comes out, it exits through the jugular foramen and then it goes on up and actually runs alongside the vagus nerve. So this portion of the nerve is called the cranial accessory nerve, and the portion inside is the cranial root. It runs alongside the vagus nerve, and it allows for that swallowing action. As I just said before, we have the cranial accessory nerve. This is the portion that runs with our vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and it goes up into the muscles of the pharyngeal, allowing for the ability to swallow. But we also have the spinal accessory nerve that has two different portions that run off and they go to two different muscles. One portion is gonna to go to the sternocleidomastoid and one is gonna to go to the trapezius. So to understand the function of the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius, it's just to understand that we're sending out muscles in here in order to make those muscles work. So what is the sternocleidomastoid portion or purpose of its function to do on like the body? It's for the head to move side to side, okay? It's this muscle that's running here from the mastoid process down to the sternum on the clavicle, and it's allowing for our head to move side to side. The trapezius is a separate muscle that's towards the back of the head. So we have a portion back here, right? It runs from the base of the skull down the back, and it's allowing for our shoulders to shrug, okay? So sternocleidomastoid, side to side. And when we say side to side, we want to remember that we're talking about rotation along the axis of the skull and the neck not having to do with anything else, okay? And then the trapezius is our shoulder shrug. We understand that our accessory nerve is a motor nerve that has to do with swallowing the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius, so what is our assessment? Our assessment is assessing these muscles against resistance. So you're gonna take a patient, you're gonna have them, you know, whatever, if they're sitting, they're laying down, hopefully have them sit up, and you're gonna ask them to turn their head to the right. When they turn their head to the right, you're gonna place your hand on the left side of their face, and then you're gonna palpate along the left. As you press your hand here, you're gonna tell them, turn into my hand, so there's resistance, and you should feel this muscle engage. Perfect. Do that on the other side. So they're gonna to turn to the left, you're gonna place your hand here, and then you're going to palpate along that muscle. Should feel nice and firm, and you should feel equal to both sides. 
Then when we want to do the trapezius, we're just going to have our hands on their shoulders. We're going to ask them to shrug their shoulders and see if it's equal on both sides and they can do it against resistance, okay? So it doesn't have to be massive resistance. It's just a little bit to see if they can push up against it. And those are the assessments that we're checking along with previously within our assessment, we did swallowing with our vagus nerve. So we already checked that off. And then we should make sure again that these are equal on both sides and that we're having the same amount of force from this patient. Then if they failed or there's something else going on, we are going to hopefully look into what is causing that. Is there something going on with this patient and is it related to the nerve? So particularly when we're talking about cranial nerves and we're looking for risks or causes, they're going to be very similar things throughout this, in this entire series. We've talked about them. We've talked about issues with trauma, right? Did this patient have some sort of injury right to the brain or somewhere along the spine that would cause an impediment with on the accessory nerve? Particularly with our accessory nerve, if there were to be some sort of issue with the nerve, let's use this color green, here, then we wouldn't be able to have any movement with our sternocleidomastoid or our trapezius. Or if there was a here, we would have an issue only with the sternocleidomastoid, here only an issue with the trapezius. So interesting to think about what's going on with the accessory nerve, along with if we have something here within the cranial, is there an issue with swallowing? And that would us lead us to investigate, is it the vagus nerve, is it the accessory nerve? So the causes could be that trauma, right? Something has gone on where the patient is having trauma to the nerve. There could be then inflammation to that area, infection to that area, could be compression from a tumor, could be a disease process where the nerve is demyelin demyelinating, right? They're having an issue with the sheathing of the nerve. Because of that, it is not able to function properly. And that is it, Ninja Nerds. That is the entire video on the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. I hope you learned something from this, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, until next time.